What's going on everybody? It's Train Neil here with Trading Stocks. Welcome back to another live day trading recap video. In this video, obviously, just like always, you're gonna see me go over my trades in real time. You're gonna see my reactions, my thought processes while I'm actually in the trade rather than post recapping them. And then at the end, you're gonna see a setup that was really, really, really brilliant. Uh, and I called the trade perfectly. And without giving too much away, uh, I'll just go ahead and throw you into the video now. If you're excited for it, happy for these live day trading recaps to be back. Take the half second, hit the like button, hit the red subscribe button if you haven't already. Let's get into the video. 301.25 does have a bid. I'll try to buy some. Oop, filled 25 shares at 301.3. Microsoft, little, uh, little breakout on the earnings here. I'm gonna stab, I'll stop below 301 here. Just a quick stop. <clears throat> <laughs> Excuse me. It actually is below 301 right now, the bid. Close eye on this. I'm a little nervous trading a blue chip in pre-market. It's not something I've really ever done before. So I'm in I'm in small size, but very spready. Let's actually zoom this out so you guys can see. So we can see the spread. Going green here. Don't know why the PL day is not showing green if the bid's up there. Let's see if we get a little spike, a little break over uh, 301.5 here. Maybe a run to 302 would be really nice. Question mark would be really nice. I just don't, it keeps rejecting 301.5. Kind of makes me want to sell it, honestly. The way it keeps rejecting this level. Just makes me want to sell it break even. It's obviously just huge resistance here. Well, this trade's taking a little while to play out, but I'm trying to be patient here. I'm trying to keep my hands off the sell button. I'm trying. It's hard for uh, it's hard for a low vol a low floats scalper to trade a stock like this. I wanted to sell it, but testing that 3015 again, testing the half dollar level again. Nice flat top resistance here. Five minutes still looks very good though. I mean, all these charts look really good. It still looks bullish. Doesn't mean it can't break down on me, but there you go. There's your 3015 break. Not followed by a lot of follow through yet. I'm selling this here. I'm taking my profits here, as so it didn't get a, it didn't get the big bang follow through that I expected. Uh, so that makes me not love the breakout. Volume's not heavy, and it didn't get the big price bang that I was expecting. So I sold, and look, it's already back below three hundred one five. Um, I'm happy with that trade. I'm happy. Look, look, it's six dollars. Yipty fucking do trade. You made six bucks. I'm just happy with how long and how patient I, I was, you know, to hold this and let it go break the 3015 for the sell. So I'm happy with that trade. Once again, small share size. I am still getting comfortable trading blue chips, especially in pre-market. I don't think I've ever done that before, trading a blue chip in pre-market. Uh, so small size, six bucks, but uh, still happy with the trade. Still happy with the way I let it play out. Uh, Microsoft at VWAP could be interesting. Microsoft right at VWAP out of open could be interesting. Back to this 304, 305 level. I uh, just no filled 305.59. Tried to buy the bid there on the dip. Damn. That's a shame. That's probably, you know, that that's a shame. There's the there's the move I wanted. No fill there. Would have been a nice little win. Wow. I mean, it would have been small, but would have been a win. I mean, I'm stabbing this here. I have an order out. Oh, fudge. Oh, fudge. I decided I decided it was time to stab it right as it started bouncing. Shit. No filled 2128. Damn it. That was dumb. I decided last second. I was like, you know what? Maybe, maybe it holding despite spy dropping is actually bullish. Shit. I mean, not that, I, once again, not that I would have gotten rich, but that was a nice entrance. Again, no fill. Two no fills out of open here. So nice, uh, nice green candles. You would like to see, I don't, what stocks are doing this? DraftKings is still weak. DraftKings is actually trading near this double bottom. I actually want to buy DraftKings here. Spy being strong and DraftKings trading at its double bottom. Trying to buy 50 shares of DraftKings here at 2110. Stop loss is under 21. Okay. 
Moving the order up to 21.12. Not be scared of pennies here. Come on. I'm trying to be smart and buy the bid. Thank you. Okay. Long DraftKings 21.12 off this double bottom. Uh, 50 shares. Nothing crazy. Stop loss below 21. Spy, spy moving up here while DraftKings is trading near its double bottom. Seems like a decent little entrance to me. You've got a well-defined stop loss. Profit target 21.4 would be nice. See if you can get over VWAP though. <clears throat> Come on, Spy. Continue to be strong. Let's help the DraftKings push here. DraftKings is up 9.5% today after being upgraded. Uh, I think Morgan Stanley upgraded them. Or was it JP Morgan? Some, some big bank upgraded them this morning. Come on, DraftKings. Get a push here, baby. Having to, being forced to trade blue chips here these last couple of days, or really these last couple of weeks, being forced to trade some, okay, tr blue chips and DraftKings, maybe not so much, but just larger float stocks in general, because the low floats, low floats just aren't moving. Nice push, Spy. Really, really nice push on the S&P. Hopefully DraftKings finds a follow. No. Nope, none of the upside, but just the downside. That's how we're trading. <laughs> I was, I mean, I had the right idea with taking a long when SPY broke this range uh, because SPY did continue. Unfortunately, this stock is not continuing with it, but not yet. We're not stopped out yet. We're not dead yet. It was Morgan Stanley that, that upgraded it. Thank you. I couldn't remember if it was Morgan Stanley or JP Morgan. We're back to green. Wow, look at SPY. What a push. Come on, DraftKings. You gotta you gotta respect the spy push, don't you? There we go, there we go. Breaking VWAP now. Come on, I would love to be selling first half at twenty one forty. Wow, look at spy. I mean, I had I had a perfect idea. I drew this I drew this range out here on stream. Drew this range out and said I'm not taking a trade until spy breaks this range. Spy broke to the upside. I was correct in the, in being long biased now, but. Fortunately, DraftKings has not. Come on. Man, get, look at SPY, man. Look at SPY. It's so strong. You are a strong stock. You're up this morning. Come on. Go. <gasps> Go. <laughs> kind of want to sell half here the way this is acting. Makes me want to sell half here. I'm doing it. I'm selling half here. The way this thing, the way this thing won't follow SPY up and every time SPY ticks down, it ticks down. I'm taking half here. Because it makes me think, because I think SPY is due for a pullback. And I think when SPY pulls back, I have a, I have some thesis theory now that this is going to pull back with it. So half here. Ooh, okay. I'm okay to be proven wrong as I still own half my shares. I'm okay to be proven wrong. Have this thing pop. <laughs> I guess if I'm trading these, these larger cap stocks, I need to be taking more share size. Because this is, once again, SPY pulling back here. Um, okay. Selling the rest of my DraftKings here into 21.4. Nice. Okay, so you can yell at me. You're allowed to yell at me. Maybe I sold the first half too soon. I just thought SPY was due for a pullback. And I thought since DraftKings wasn't catching into the upside, it was going to catch the downside. Um, but another another small win today. Like I said, maybe if I'm... Maybe if I'm trading these low floats, I need to be... Or, sorry. Trading these high floats, I need to be taking larger size because obviously i need to be making more than eight dollars in a nice winning trade like that right so something to consider but uh still still trying to get used to you know trading larger floats and position sizing is a part of that but another nice win on the day nice trade overall whether whether i took small size or not it was a nice trade so i'm happy enough Ooh. Why am, I, why am I buying the bid? Buy the ask. I'm buying only 100 shares here of BAC because uh, it's dipping while SPY is pushing highs. BAC has followed this entire SPY move and now SPY is pushing highs and this is pulling back. I only took 100 shares because I'm actually not fully opposed to buying more. Stop loss is 46.10. If I could sell up to 46.35, that would be nice. Uh, new home, home numbers just dropped and SPY is still pushing highs. Gosh, look at DraftKings over 22. Once again, oh well. I sold where my profit target was, but wow. But wow at the same time. All right, BAC had us immediately green. 
I guess I could have baby scalped this, but I would have had to take larger size to make that worth it. XELN. Yeah, I don't. I just don't care about the penny stock, guys. I mean, I can keep it up for you guys, but I'm not trading this. CLNE is back to VWAP once again. Be care or not be careful, but good luck. This thing has respected VWAP once and twice. See if it does the third time for you. I don't like it. I don't love the volume. It's grindy, but okay. Here we go. My BAC trade starting to go green. Why do I kind of just want to sell that? Kind of just want to lock that profit. Well, although it's too late now, it's rolling back over. Shoot. I kind of just wanted to lock that profit there, but maybe it's too premature. That's that's my that's my low float scalping. See, that's the thing. That's the thing with going to trading higher float stocks like Bank of America, DraftKings, Microsoft, is my my propensity to just want to see profit, take profit, like I kind of have to do when I scalp low floats, is definitely still there. So like I see I see money and I want to take it. Wow, DraftKings is at 2223. I mean, that's really good for me. I do own DraftKings in my retirement account, so I love to see it pushing, but wow, what a move off that double bottom. I mean, we had the perfect entrance. I wouldn't exactly call those the perfect exits, but I sold into the resistance. That's what the trade plan was when I entered. Oh, can't complain too much, I guess. <clears throat> Come on, Bank of America spy is ripping highs again. What are you doing? You followed this entire spy move, and now, now, I seem to, I seem to, crazy time hustler. Thank you for the follow. Uh, I seem to not be able to find like the uh, the stocks that are moving with spy when spy pushes highs. I'm doing the right thing by buying stocks when spy pushes highs, but I can't get into the stocks that also push highs with spy. It's kind of annoying. Now I really do kind of want to just sell this. I'm going to. I'm taking my profits. I'm sorry. Maybe it's too early again. Um, but I think SPY needs a pullback. And Bank of America is not really following. Um, so I think if SPY pulls back from here, once again, Bank of America is going to see the downside. Since it's not seeing the upside, it's going to catch the downside. And this might be already some, some leading in, uh, inclination to that. So... Once again, we're locking small profit, but I guess the small wins are adding up. We're three for three, 20 bucks. I mean, I, I guess they're adding up. I mean, it's something, it's some kind of money in this choppy Fed day market. It's some kind of money, but <laughs> I'll take it. I'm not going to complain about making money, I guess. I'm not going to complain. Pull back to 450 does look interesting now. This bull flag break, half dollar break. I have an order at 450 or 451 to buy 250 shares. Tight stop below 449. There's a nice bid. Sorry, you guys can't see. There's a nice little bid at 449 as well. It's printing 451. It's not filling me yet. Come on, fill me. Okay. Oh fuck. <laughs> Filled me and immediately broke. Okay, I'm gonna give it a second. Giving it a second here. Okay, I'm out. I'm out. Yep, didn't hold. Fudge. I just talked about how I didn't want to trade this stock too, but. I think I've got to take that. I think that pattern is too nice there. This is a trigger bar, meaning this is a double the average of the last 15 bars. That's what that yellow line is. Um, breakout of a half dollar level on a strong stock, pull back to it. I think I have to take that trade. Unfortunately, first loser of the day. We try to trade a low float stock today and we do lose on it, but respect your stop losses. Get out quick. There's no need to become a bag holder here. Not saying it can't continue, but this is how you don't become a bag holder. I literally told myself not to trade this too, but no volume out of open, and then it randomly starts pumping. Once again, another setup that I have a very bad track record trading. I did so I did break a rule in that trade. I did break a rule. I deserve to lose money. You break rules. You break rules, you deserve to lose money. Still green on the day. I'm sitting here beating myself up, but uh BCR actually technical analysis on. First thing I see is it is <clears throat> currently it, it got hammered and it's close to closing its upside gap. That looks like a good short to me. Uh, larger time frame. I mean, nice big run. Your flat top resistance right around 17 and a half. Um, got walked down. This looks fine. 
This looks fine. I mean, I sure as shit wouldn't be longing here. Uh, if I was gonna long this, I'd much rather be longing like back down here, like 13. You can get long at 13, stop below 11 and a half, profit target 17 and a half. That's where I'd be doing. And I don't mind the idea of a short right here at this gap close. Fuck, it's already paid you 20 cents. BCRX, oh, oh, whoa, wait, BCRX is shortable. I do not mind this short on BCRX. Shit, I wish I wish this was brought to my attention like four minutes earlier. <laughs> I don't mind this short on this daily chart. Stock got crushed and is now closing an upside gap. I want to be shorting BCRX at 1605. Shit. Oh, it's gonna roll now, isn't it? I could have shorted it at 16, and I could be covering here for 30 bucks. Bop. <laughs> Excuse me. Damn. Maybe maybe got too greedy here. Maybe waiting for pennies too much here. Could have shorted it at 16. Oh, it's gonna roll. Guess what we're not gonna do, chat? We're not going to go. Oh my god, I missed my entrance. Shit. It's gonna go lower. Okay, I'm short at 1578. We're not going to do that. That's how you get yourself in trouble. You start uh, emotionally, like, revenge trading. You missed your insurance. Damn, I just won in 1605. I was just hunting pennies here. Damn it. <sighs> Could have just shorted the whole dollar, Trey. Oh, and 150 shares. Oh, God, I want to be sick. Oh, that's the day made. That's profit target right there. That's profit target hit right there. Yikes. Just broke this down. Nice daily just nice daily chart for a short. Wow. Oh, I'm so angry. I just oh, I just wanted 1605. I just wanted pennies higher. Fudge sickles. Did anybody in chat take that short? I talked about it. I mean I lined it up perfectly for you guys. Stock that got hammered, closing upside gap. Short. Fucking molly whopped. Wow, what a short. <sighs> it's unfortunate. That's the day made right there if I just make that decision to short that instead of waiting for pennies. But oh well. Once again, we're not going to beat ourselves up. We're not going to get emotional. We're not going to go emotionally trade it. Although, funnily enough, chasing the short at 1576 would have worked in this case. But <laughs> more often than not, that doesn't work, trust me. Don't focus, you'll get the next one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not sitting here like... I might be acting emotional, but... I'm not, I don't let my emotions affect my trade. Well, I try to not let my emotions affect my trading. I like to think I'm pretty good at that. Not letting my emotions affect my trading. <laughs> I used to not be like that at all. Anybody, anybody watch my uh, really old YouTube videos? I used to be an emotional, uh, emotional trading wreck. Yeah, it's at 15.4. Ah! It's at 15.4. <laughs> Oh, that was just like the freest money ever. And I just wanted it five cents higher. I missed out on 60 cents short because I wanted it five cents higher. Uh...